Hey CrossCart fans. Let's have a one-way conversation about the budget cart. I don't want to call it the budget cart anymore, just to be honest. Uh, it was built on a budget, but it is way cooler than something called a budget cart. This will now be the number 14 or the safari cart or the 459 or anything else besides the budget cart. I took this to Busco Beach and I set it up for anybody to be able to drive it. It has a seat slider on it. It's got 18 horsepower, maybe a little bit more with the intake and exhaust. Um, the pedal had sliders on it, and this was just made to be bulletproof and easy to drive and super safe. And it was all of that. I let probably 50 to 60 people get a drive in this. And I know you guys think this is slow and everybody wants 150 horsepower booster that goes 150 miles an hour. But I'll tell you something, everybody that drove this thought this was fast because it is fast. It is not slow, all right? Speed is perspective, okay? So if you are going 150 miles an hour over rough terrain, you're gonna feel like you're gonna die. <laughs> that is just experience talking. Now, I'm just like you guys. When I first started building these, I'm like, is 50 horsepower going to be enough for an off-road cart? And it turns out it is. Now, you guys hear me saying this over and over again. That's because I want you to hear me, all right? 18 horsepower in an off-road go-kart is enough, all right? So I'm not saying that you have to do this. I'm not saying that you have to do this. But there's a lot of guys that want to get into fabrication, want to get into building carts and off-road machines. You should not start with a Hayabusa. You should not start with a motorcycle engine. You should start with something simple, some simple and easy, okay? There were guys there that brought 250cc two-stroke dirt bikes that had the time of their lives in this. Now, it topped out, I think, at 40, 46, 51, something around there. Uh, that's because I have the taller tires on it. There, these are 23 inch tires, so our 46 mile an hour top speed is going to go up a little bit just because of diameter and stuff. I did not re-gear it. Now, once this had 100 pounds of sand in it, it kind of slowed it down. Uh, something I regret is not putting the body panels on. I was working really hard to try to get them done, and if I'd known how much sand was going to get in this thing, uh, I would have 100% finished it. Uh, the sand got in and locked the seat slider, and that was after a 12-year-old kid drove it, so everybody else that drove it was a little cramped, but they didn't complain. Having a simple, affordable cart that can do jumps, that can hold its own on the drag strip, that can drift, do donuts, is insanely fun and definitely worth trying. And then once you get your teeth cut, once you figure out like the power of, or the feeling of 18 horsepower, then you can gauge if you wanna add the madness of a Hayabusa. Now, depending on where you're driving, uh, like I said, the asphalt track, this thing sucked. 2.1 miles, you got, you know, a, a quarter mile or more straight away. This thing's topping out in the first 500 feet and you're just stuck at top speed there. So. If you are driving on an asphalt track or doing time pack stuff, yeah, go motorcycle engine, go quad engine and, and gear it for a top speed. But just for off-road outdoor fun, this is great. Now, 
I'm not saying that I would trade this for my KTM because the KTM is my favorite because it's it's the all-around performer. You can take that thing anywhere. But as far as building something, letting everybody drive it and everybody coming out with smiles, happiness, adrenaline, all that stuff, this checks all of those boxes. And it would be hard to not imagine this being part of uh, KJ Racing. Like It is a huge staple. This does have the three inch stretch on it and I don't know if that makes it handle a little better but it, it just feels good. This is also the fifth one I built so all of my skills are kind of coming to a head and I'm figuring this out. But I'm also figuring it out for you. If you're building a chassis and you follow the budget build series you are going to have an amazing chassis. So just my two bits on the cross cart. Everybody that got to drive it, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I know that I was pressed for time the entire time I was at Busco because I was giving driver briefs and telling everybody how to use it and where to go. And people would go out and just take a short spin on it and come back. I'm like, go do some jumps, take it to the drag strip. Really open it up, see what it can do because that's what I built it to do, is just do anything um, and stay within that safe parameter. Uh, a couple years ago, I let some guys drive the faster ones that hung around and they scared the crap out of me. Uh, watching somebody go 90 miles an hour in something you built in your garage is not exciting at all. Letting someone drive an 18 horsepower cart that tops out at 50 miles an hour that has a full cage and harness and all the safety features super enjoyable <laughs> so take it for what you will uh i know that, that you guys want the power i do too don't get me wrong but this is incredibly incredibly fun that being said uh after busco i decided to uh upgrade this uh it's got a predator 459 engine in it, uh, the max power, whatever it is, 18 horsepower. Uh, Duromax just came out with their 500cc 20 horsepower engine. So I got it. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether to swap this motor or build another frame for a comparison. I'm always strapped for time, but this cart is solid and I have trouble taking apart things that are solid and good to go. Uh, the reason is I like the Duramax, it's bolt on two extra horsepower. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're sitting from, when you're going from 18 horsepower to 20 horsepower, that is over a 10% increase in power, which is a lot. That's a lot. I, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but over 10% is a lot. Uh, the other reason is the carburetor is already upgraded. You don't need to buy another carburetor. Uh, it's already tunable, uh, you can rejet it, do the uh, air fuel mix, like it's, it's just a good carburetor already on it. And the biggest thing is I was running my lights and you guys know the Predator engines don't charge your battery, or at least not very well. It's got a single coil, so it just bleeds off the extra from running your spark plug to your battery, which is not a lot. The Duromax, according to Redbeard's Garage, he is my go-to when I want information on generator type engines. Dude is brilliant. I love watching his stuff and I love his builds. Uh, he said that it has two coils on it, which means there is a dedicated charging coil, which means you can run all your lights, you can run your stereo, uh, you can run everything off that engine and you don't have to figure out how to add a second coil to your Predator engine. So that's huge to me, but obviously that's on the down on the list on priorities. Uh, I got to get that two seater running. Just so you guys know my schedule, summer is my test, tune, modify, upgrade season. Uh, I like to drive. I like to get in there, mess with shocks, mess with tuning, exhaust, the simple stuff, the clean work, if you will. And then winter is my heavy build season. Uh, I, I can't drive much around here. Uh, when the snow's right, I'll, I'll, I'll take a little spin, but that's my time in the garage to come up with new things and uh, get things finished. So 
Stay tuned. Uh, the two seater is going to be done this winter. And as always, there is so much more coming. Thank you guys. You guys are the best ever. I appreciate all the subscribers, all the friends I've made. Uh, I can't say it enough. I love this community. You guys are so awesome. Enjoy the build.